the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. The disciples devoted themselves with one accord to prayer with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we gather in this sacred place on this day, celebrating the feast day of St. Bridget of Sweden, the great foundress of the Bridgetine order, great visionary, a great lady who brought great renewal to Western Europe of her time. We pray especially for all who have come here to Fatima for their many intentions, with those who come to seek the love of God, the forgiveness of their sins, and that companionship of the heart of Mary which will triumph. Conscious that each one of us are sinners and in need of the Lord's mercy on this day, and heeding Our Lady's call to conversion, we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day, and exulting in the holiness of her children, may draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and a great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as men make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole of their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she, she whom people called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. When we read that story of the Annunciation, we kind of say, well, that was lovely for Our Lady, but what about us? How do we see ourselves in the Annunciation, where Mary conceives in that moment the Lord Jesus within her? If you look at the Annunciation closely, you'll see the Mass, the Holy Mass, the Most Holy Eucharist, which we celebrate on this place. Fatima was always known as the altar of the world. It was here that sacrifice was made, the sacrifices of the children in reparation to God. And the Holy Mass is the reparation for our sins, to make present Calvary here and now in this moment. Even the Rosary itself, the Holy Rosary, for by us Dominicans, was always called the Mass of the Evening. Because in the home place, or in the chapel, or in the field, wherever it is celebrated, you're calling down in that place that divine mystery into that place. And what happens on the altar is we are making present the sacrifice of Calvary. So the graces that flow from this altar over you, you don't see it, you don't feel it. It's as if we stand at Calvary, here and now in this moment, the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord made present. That's why we consecrate bread and wine separately. And it symbolizes the breaking and the tearing apart of the Lord's body and the Lord's blood. And if you watch carefully at the Mass, when the priest puts a little particle in at the Lamb of God, he joins the body and blood back together, the symbol of the resurrection. And then you receive him. In fact, you don't receive him. He receives you into himself. He receives you. You do not receive him. He receives you. But looking at the Annunciation, how can you see the Mass there? The angel Gabriel coming to a town, and he goes into Mary and he says, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. How does the Mass begin? The priest begins with the, the blessing, and then he says, The Lord be with you. The same words that Mary was told by the angel. You are greeted in the same way, as if you are Our Lady. The Lord be with you. The Lord is with you. She's deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. What do we do next at after the Mass and the greeting? The priest calls us to prepare ourselves. Lord, I am not worthy. And we say the confessor, I confess. And like Mary, we're disturbed by our lives. And we beat our breast. In fact, we beat our hearts. We give it a little jolt. 
you must love more. And then do not be afraid you've won God's favor. And then the word listen. Listen, Mary. What do we do then? We sit down after the opening prayer and the scriptures are read to us. The scriptures are read to us. Listen, Mary. And we are called to do the same. Listen to the message of God for you today. And then the whole history of salvation is revealed to her. But she says, how can that come about? How can that happen? She ponders it in her heart. How can that come about? That's what the priest is meant to do in the sermon for you. He's meant to open it up to you. To explain to you what has happened in the reading of the scriptures. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel said, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. What does the priest invoke at the altar? May your Holy Spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy. The Holy Spirit descends upon the bread and wine to make them holy, as it will descend on Mary. And Mary says, yes, fiat. What do you say when you receive Holy Communion? Amen. So be it. So do you see the Annunciation and the power of the Mass? It's for you. It's your Annunciation. So whatever you're bringing to the Mass today, whatever troubles are in your heart today, whatever sorrows are there, well, Mary has been in that place for you. And like her, you're asked to go from here. The Mass at the very end says, go in peace. It doesn't say stay here. It says go. Go out and bring the Lord to someone else. Because, you know, if you're not changed by the Mass, people will call you a hypocrite. If you don't go from here happy and at peace, and people call you a hypocrite, oh, you've been to Mass. You must come from here after the Lord receiving you changed that the Annunciation has happened in your own life and that you too, like Mary, you carry within you Christ to the world. The word at the very end of the Gospel in Greek, it says, Mary arose and went to the hill country. But the word used in Greek is Mary experienced the resurrection within her, new life, and went from the house of Nazareth to her cousin Elizabeth without fear. You must experience the resurrection. You must go from the altar each time a new person. Now, it might not last too long, but you must be changed each time. And to go from here and bring him to another. That's Mary's role as the first disciple, to bring him, and she brought him to Elizabeth. And she had no fear. We are told continually by the Lord, do not be afraid. It's I. I shall do it. So to bring that joy from here to the next person you meet, whether it's only outside the Capellina, whether it's in your hotel, whether it's in a cafe, wherever it is, is to bring, I have experienced the Lord and I carry him within me. You are the God-bearer after Holy Communion. And the same Jesus that our Blessed Lady contains within her womb is the same Jesus you receive in Holy Communion. There's no difference. There is no difference. St. Thomas Aquinas says that the greatest act, even greater than creation itself, was when God became flesh within Mary. It was greater than the creation of this world. You too this day are allowed to share in that great act of the new creation, that God will come to dwell in you. So go out from here, the God-bearer, Bring him to the next person. You don't need to be a missionary. You don't need to be a great evangelist. You don't have to stand here. But to the next person you meet, bring him to that person. Through a simple smile, through your graciousness, through your kindness, that you too have been a witness to the resurrection in your own life. And remember, if our Lord is within you, and you're told that at the beginning of Mass, the Lord be with you, well, the mother goes with you because she's never far from her son. Because behind us here, yes, we come to Our Lady's image, to the spot where she appeared in 1917, but always she leaves one thing wherever she appears. She leaves her son. 
And that is hidden within the little house called the Capilina. He's here and she's beside him. And as you go from here today, she goes with you, following the son who is within you. And so let us pray. We pray in this Holy Mass for all who are sick at this time, those who have asked us to pray for them here at the Capilina in Fatima, to bring before the Immaculate Heart of Mary all the many intentions that have been entrusted to our prayers. We pray for the sick and the suffering, those who are in hospital, those who are awaiting test results and preparing for tests, that the Lord may grant them healing and peace through our prayers. Lord, hear us. We pray for our families and particularly those who no longer practice the faith that through our example and through the experience of the resurrection at the Holy Mass that they may encounter within us and through us the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. We pray for families in difficulties that the families of the three visionaries suffered. We pray for families in similar circumstances. Lord, hear us. For those living with financial burdens, for those living in fear, Lord, hear us. And for all who are dying today, we pray especially for sinners that they may repent in these last moments of their life to accept the gift of peace and reconciliation with the Lord. Lord, hear us. In the silence of our own hearts now, we pray for our own special intention. Lord, hear us. And for our beloved dead, our deceased parents, our grandparents, our godparents, we remember the holy souls, and especially the holy souls that have been forgotten and have no one to pray for them. Eternal rest grant unto them, Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. To our blessed mother we turn as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Francisco and Saint Jacinta, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you at humble. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honour the Blessed Virgin Mary. Receiving your word in her Immaculate Heart, she was found worthy to conceive him in her virgin's womb, and giving birth to the Creator, she nurtured the beginnings of the Church. Standing beside the cross, she received the testament of divine love, and took to herself as sons and daughters all those who by the death of Christ are born to heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the spirit you had promised, she joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples and so became the patron of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pilgrim church with a mother's love and watches in kindness over the church's homeward steps until the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, my Lord and my God. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bridget of Sweden, with St. Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Antonio our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Christi custodia et me in vitam eternam. As he hung upon the cross, Jesus said to the disciple whom he loved, Behold your mother.
Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin's motherly help, your church may teach all nations by proclaiming the gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. For those of you who have religious articles and you wish to have them blessed, we'll now give the official blessing over all religious goods that you may have brought and to be given as gifts to others. The Lord be with you. Through the intercession of Mary Immaculate, Queen of the Holy Rosary, Holy Father, Saint Dominic, the saints and blessers of our order, Our Lady of Fatima, Saint Jacinta and Saint Francisco, may Almighty God bless these articles of the faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Salve Regina. Mater.